Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. I'm host of the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. We're a little over halfway through the show right now. Uh, I wanted to read something to you from uh, the great football coach, uh, Lou Holtz, um, talking about the differences in America, the different Americas. We're going to look at the two views uh, that we have of America today, but Lou comes along, an, an old guy, uh, and he says, the Democrats are right. There are two Americas, the America that works and the America that doesn't. Huh? The America that contributes and the America that doesn't. It's not the haves and the have-nots, it's the do's and the don'ts. Some people do their duty as Americans. They obey the law. They support themselves. They contribute to society, and others just don't. That's what divides America. Our president has pledged the rest of his term to help some people have higher incomes than others. No. He has pledged himself to make sure that doesn't exist. The fact that some people make more money than other people is viewed as a sin. It's part of the problem, and it's not just. Lou Holtz says he doesn't believe that the Democrats are empowered by their followers. Rather, they have enslaved their followers in a culture of dependence and entitlement of victimhood and anger instead of ability and hope. And he goes on to describe success and failure in his world growing up. He says if you chose to drop out of high school or skip college, you were apt to have a different outcome than someone who got a diploma and pushes on with purposeful education. You have children out of wedlock, Life is apt to take pretty much just one course. You have them within marriage, and life is apt to take another course. My doctor, for example, makes far more than I do. There is a significant income inequality between us. Our lives have had an inequality of outcome, but our lives also have had an inequality of effort. While my doctor went to college and then devoted his young adulthood to medical school and residency, I got a job in a restaurant. He made a choice. I made a choice. And our choice has led us back, or led us uh, to different outcomes. The outcome that he chose pays better. Does that mean he cheated? Which is what our president is trying to tell us, no, we were both free men in a free society where free choices lead to different outcomes. He references the simple law of the harvest. It's in Galatians chapter 4. Whatsoever you sow, that shall ye also reap. He says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. That's Lou Holtz. Not a flaming, radical preacher like me. Just a regular guy who can see what was going on and what is going on. I wrote a blog this week. You can see it at the BibleForum.net. Uh, it's entitled, Two Views to Americas. Where are the adults? There's a picture on there of uh, a set of eyeballs looking at you. And it says, when everyone does what is right in his own eyes, immorality happens. U.S. Senator er Bernie Sanders is running for the nomination of his party to be President of the United States. He told the students at Liberty University that America was founded as a racist nation. Is that true? No. Dr. Ben Carson's running for the nomination of his party for president of the United States, and he told a news outlet 
that he did not believe a Muslim should be president of the U.S. And he got a lot of flack. The United States, he told the news outlet, is different than Muslim countries. And should a Muslim be president of the U.S., given the fact that Islam's goal is to destroy America and all civil, social, and religious systems that are not Muslim, you could never quite be sure of his motives. We have a president right now we're not sure of his motives. How much more so if he were an overt, avowed Muslim? Former Speaker of the House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi <clears throat> said the Republican candidates are running on positions out of step with the American people. She was talking about abortion. She was talking about same-sex unions, about immigration, government spending, attitudes toward the, the threat being presented by Islam, and just generally getting along with other people in the world. Is that true? It might be. Several folks are running for Republican nomination, uh, and they are quite adamant that the general population is, A, not supportive of what Pelosi and her party believe, and B, should they be, <laughs> that philosophy spells only doom for America as it was conceived and as most of us know it. And what we are listening to when we listen to these folks are the differences, the great chasm of disconnect that exists in our society and is expressed in both our religion and in our politics. In general, this is exactly what happens to societies over time if they don't have a compelling reason to hold the line against incremental drifting. Specifically, this is what societies do that are being undermined by licentiousness. Now, that's not exactly a word you use every day. But licentiousness is the lack of legal or moral restraint a person can be licentious, but so can a government. It occurs especially when you are disregarding sexual restraint. It is marked by a disregard for strict rules of correctness. Does it sound like America? Does it sound like many, if not most, of the people you know? The truth is, every generation of humans has had this. Every generation of humans are susceptible to this kind of incrementalism. It's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of humanity to want more moral freedom. Think of two-year-olds. Think of teenagers. But it is the responsibility of every adult generation to hold the line against this moral slide. In the family, we call it parenting, something that, that really doesn't happen anymore. In the world, we call it leadership. I sat at a ball game this week with my grandson playing Little League Baseball. Is one of the joys of, I guess you can call it retirement. I'm working 50 hours a week. To be able to live somewhere near your kids and, and watch the grandchildren grow up for a change. And sitting next to me was a, a family, and they had a, a, a child playing ball, and they had another boy uh, who wasn't. And he came around and he asked his mom for money to go get a hot dog, and she said no, and he begged and he pleaded, and she said no. Uh, you don't need a hot dog. So he sat down between her and me, and sitting on the bench was a something wrapped up in tinfoil, and he grabbed it, and she grabbed for him, and he pulled away, and 
He opened it up. It was a hot dog. And she fussed with him a couple of times and then physically just looked away and said, oh, brother. Parenting. He wanted to go get hot, uh, ketchup on the hot dog. She said, okay. He came back with the thing smothered in ketchup and his face full of it. She made him clean his face. But I watched him eat this thing. And he ate the dog. First from one end of the bun, turned it around, took his tongue, and lifted the hot dog out of the bun and ate that. When it was done, he threw the roll away. Would your child do that? And you're sitting right there with him. Well, what difference does it make he doesn't like the bread? He's supposed to be learning. And the most important lesson he needs to learn is do what you're told. Obey. Why did a mother fix him a hot dog knowing he didn't like bread? Bread's not important to a diet anyway, is it? She thought it was. But it's too much trouble. That's not parenting. That's not leadership. But that's America. Keep the children happy. They're, they're a mess. They're, they're upset. They're crying. They're laughing. Well, I keep playing with them. No. I give them the finger. Stop. Not having it. You keep it up, we're going home. And you're not going to like what happens when we get home. I never had that problem with my kids. And I never needed that. Different world. that both parenting and leadership have been missing for the last 50 years is a sad commentary, but is now beginning to show up in the broader spectrum of society in Americans who have little or no objective moral compass. The Vice President of the United States is in his seventh decade. He's older than I am. He sat behind the Pope at a joint session of Congress. He listened to what the Pope had to say, clapped for much of it. And then the next thing I saw, and I don't know if he went out and was now in front of a microphone or whether the news outlets just found this one and played it, but he looked like he had the same suit on. And they asked him what he thought about the Pope's visit and about some of the things that he said. Now, one of the things he said had to do with the sanctity of life. And it included life before you're born in the womb. And most of the things he had to say came with loud claps, standing ovations. This one did not. And the vice president didn't clap. But afterwards, he was standing in front of a camera. And he said in very stark terms, anybody who is a pro-life or takes a pro-life position has no place in the Democratic Party. Now, you know, there is no such thing called Democratic Party. There is a Democrat Party. And they are largely not very Democratic. Um, Republicans aren't either. There's, it, anyway, semantics. None of this seems really all that important to most of us who we find standing on what we call the left. And it isn't important because they seek the liberty, I would call it the license, to live as free as they please. I get to do whatever I want. I live in the land of the free. And they detest the fact that anybody or anything might have a claim on their life choices. They want to be free. Where does that come from? It comes from a heart that is desperately wicked 
and deceitful beyond anything anybody can know. The fact is America was not founded as a racist nation. The founders wanted to completely eliminate slavery in this nation, even those who owned slaves. And their public statements are written records to show this clearly. No government is completely righteous because it's been designed and it is being operated by fallible creatures. However, to let the inmates run the asylum would be a recipe for certain disaster. And there are just certain things you cannot allow. You cannot allow a floating financial system a dollar that's founded based on nothing but the goodwill of the government. You can't do that. Yeah, but we want to do it. And we'll, we'll protect it. Okay. Colorado legalized marijuana. It's only the right, yeah, well, I mean, bunch of people wanted it. Medical. Have you read about Colorado lately? Today, they're trying to decide what to do with the rapid increase of juvenile marijuana use, a condition that threatens their health, their ability to get an education, their ability to get and to hold a job, and it threatens their good mental health. And you say, well, who knew it was going to do that? Uh, the medical community knew that. The criminal justice community knew that. Marijuana users knew that. Every cop on the beat knows that marijuana use alters depth perception. It's one of the big bugaboos in traffic accidents. No, he's not drunk. Breathalyzer says he's stone cold sober. But he's been smoking. And the car is further away or closer. He doesn't know. He can't judge. Everybody knows that. It affects reflexes. It affects anxiety, aggression, memory loss. Memory loss has always been associated with marijuana. Huh? What? Yeah. Now, marijuana is not technically addictive, and it gets a pass because of it, but marijuana users generally like the feeling they get and very often will increase the number of times they use it. And the studies show this can lead to a greater incident of psychosis and schizophrenia. And that doesn't even factor in that the doses of THC per part have increased over the last 20 years from 3% to as high as 25%. And the commercials are there. This is not your daddy's marijuana. It's dangerous. Yeah, there are two Americas. One that understands people cannot have everything they want and still be strong. And another that has never really grown up. The most dangerous, however, are those who know but continue to pander to the children because it lines their pockets. These are the truly evil people in this world. When you start looking for somebody to blame, it may not be limited to Democrats it may not be limited to Republicans. It may be Christians in your church. Anybody, everybody who's pandering to the children of this society because it's easier, easier than trying to keep everything in order, trying to keep it safe. Elected officials are pandering to their base for the benefits they receive. What's the difference? Two Americas. 
And all we really need are more adults.